Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello, welcome, welcome back for a new class, for a new sentence. Are you ready? Well, the sentence is I won't understand anything. I won't. Yo no entenderé nada. Nada de nada. I won't. Won't. Will not. Won't. I won't understand anything. Si todo el mundo habla a la vez. O al mismo tiempo. If everyone speaks or talks. Aquí digamos speaks. If everyone speaks at the same time. At the same time. At the same time. Cerrando la boca con same. Con la M. Y con la M de time. Same time. Same time. I won't understand anything if everybody speaks. Or if everybody, if everyone speaks at the same time or talks at the same time. Normal. I won't understand anything. La contracción de will not. Recordadlo. Won't. Si todo el mundo habla, tercer verbo singular con everybody. If everybody speaks at the same time. Y bienvenidos a la clase 179. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. I won't understand anything if everybody speaks at the same time. No entenderé nada si todo el mundo habla al mismo tiempo. Y ahora vamos a ver la primera parte de la frase. I won't understand anything. No entenderé nada. I won't. Sí, ¿cómo nos gusta esta? Won't. Lo tenemos bien practicado, ¿no? Won't. Will, not, la contracción, won't. Muy bien. I won't understand. Entender. I won't understand anything. ¿Y por qué estamos diciendo anything y no nothing? Porque tenemos en won't, will y not contraído una negación ya. Won't. Así que no podemos tener un doble, una doble negación. No podemos decir I won't understand nothing. No. I won't understand anything. Nothing, anything. Anything es cuando ya tenemos una negación en la frase. Un ejemplo. I won't understand anything, but I'll go anyway. No voy a entender nada, pero iré de cualquier forma. It's technology time. Ya sabes. You know, my, my computer speaks a lot of languages, but now the program is not working. I don't know why, but it's not working. And... I won't understand anything in Chinese now. If people write in Chinese, I won't understand anything. I won't understand anything. I won't understand anything in Chinese. I won't understand anything. If they write in French, without my computer, I won't understand anything. Japanese, I won't understand anything. Comments in, in German. If you write in German, I won't understand anything. Porque no funciona la máquina para hacer la traducción. To do the translation. The translation machine isn't working. If you write in other languages, I won't understand anything. Please write in English today. Otherwise, I won't understand anything. Send. Vamos bien con no hacer los dobles negaciones, ¿a que sí? I won't understand, no nothing, I won't understand anything. Muy bien. ¿Y cómo vamos con los condicionales? Bien, ¿no? Aquí tenemos otra primer condicional. Otro primer condicional. I won't understand anything, con el futuro will, I, pero en negativo. I won't understand anything. Y luego tenemos if, por eso es un condicional. If. Everybody speaks. Lo dejamos en presente. No metemos will o would o nada de eso. Es en presente. If everybody speaks. Y no air speaks. I won't understand everything if everybody speaks. Muy bien. Veamos más ejemplos. If everybody speaks so loudly, I won't be able to hear. Si todo el mundo habla tan alto, no voy a poder entender o escuchar. Entonces, ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que es 
deaf. Sordo, sorda, deaf. He is deaf. Please speak louder. Él está sordo. Por favor, habla un poco más alto. Yo, 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 people. It's me, your favorite DJ live for you. Today, we have something very special. Mira qué pasa si todo el mundo habla when I put this microphone in the air. If everybody speaks, listen. Come on, speak. It only works if everybody speaks. Eh? Has oído? Qué chulo, eh? If everybody speaks, this effect comes out of the microphone. Si todo el mundo habla is if everybody speaks, okay? With an S. If everybody speaks. Ok, vamos a ver qué tal cuando todo el mundo canta. If everybody sings. Come on, sing. Sing one of my songs. It only works if everybody sings. See? That's amazing. I'm going to use this in my next show. Now, let's see what happens when everybody sings and speaks. Come on, sing and speak. It only works if everybody speaks or if everybody sings. Ahora vamos a ver la última parte de la frase. At the same time. Al mismo tiempo. Y tenemos la misma regla que teníamos para la palabra speak, que no podemos tener esa E colándose enfrente de la S. E speaks. No. E, same. No. Same. Speaks. Eso es. Practícalo en casa. At the same time. Al mismo tiempo. Veamos más ejemplos con al mismo tiempo. At the same time. No olvides el artículo. We always leave work at the same time. Siempre salimos de trabajo al mismo tiempo. At the same time. Are you deaf? I said, don't do it at the same time. ¿Estás sordo? He dicho que no lo hagas al mismo tiempo. Are you deaf? La palabra del día. Sordo. Bueno, aquí queda un poco mal educado. Pero bueno, lo decimos así, grosero en inglés. Deaf. Are you deaf? Deaf y no deaf. Deaf. Vamos a ver toda la frase. I won't understand anything. Y no, I won't understand nothing. I won't understand anything if everybody speaks at the same time. No, I won't. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, great. Great! Well, congratulations! Yeah! Uh, well, well, no, I'm, I can't right now. Well, I, I'm doing a show. Yeah, well, I can't. I can't talk to you and talk to them at the same time. Yeah, well, it's impossible. I'm a man. I can't multitask. No, no, no. It's impossible. I can't speak to you on the phone and speak to them on the camera at the same time. Okay, let me talk to them. Deja que hable con ellos un rato. Okay, I'll call you. I'll get back to you. Okay. Cool, because I, I can't. Not at the same time. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye, and congratulations again. Okay. Hey, uh, Mr. Strong, say hello to these. Well, I was talking to a friend, yeah, and I, well, I want to talk to you, and I, I can't do both at the same time. No puedo hacer ambos a la misma vez. Yeah, at the same time. At the same time. Can you do two things at the same time? If you're a man, you're lying. Mientes. Yeah, it's difficult for us to do one thing. Yeah. Can you do two things at the same time? A la misma vez? Okay. Well, now I'm talking to you because I can't talk to him and talk to you. I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> Hello again, welcome, welcome, welcome to another class, to another sentence, to another opportunity. And the sentence for today is lots of things. Muchas cosas han ocurrido desde la última vez que te escribí. Lots of things have happened. Lots of things, lots, lot, or a lot of things. Two forms, a lot of, lots of. Lots of things, si te lots of, la S de lots, se enlace con la O de of. Lots of, lots of things have happened since I last wrote to you. Desde que ulti, última vez te escribí. Así lo decimos en inglés. 
con el pasado simple, después de since en este caso. Lots of things have happened. Yes, sir. Lots of things have happened since I last wrote to you. Since the last time I wrote to you. Since I last wrote to you. Write, wrote, written. The past tense of to write. Wrote, wrote. W es muda al principio. Lots of things have happened since the last time I wrote to you. Hola, bienvenidos a la clase número 179. Y hoy tenemos la frase... Lots of things have happened since I last wrote to you. En español, muchas cosas han ocurrido o oh, han ocurrido muchas cosas desde que te escribí por última vez. Bien, vamos con la primera parte. Lots of things, muchas cosas. Bien, aquí lots of things o también se puede decir a lot of things. Se puede usar tanto con contables con, como incontables. Por ejemplo, there is lots of water o oh, There are lots of gifts. Ahora, cuidado con la pronunciación de things, que no es things ni things, sino things, things. Repite conmigo, things. Muy bien. Vamos con algunos ejemplos. I bought lots of things. Look. They conveyed lots of things in that press release. Comunicaron o transmitieron muchas cosas en ese comunicado de prensa. Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, the word of the day, to convey, transmitir una idea o una opinión. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. You know, I've been working here for five years. And since I started here, lots of things have changed. Yeah, lots of things have got worse. Lots of things are so unfair. Lots of things are so boring. Yeah, muchas cosas son muy injustas por aquí. Lots of things are very unfair around here. Lots of things. Lots of things have become very suspicious. Anna, for example, Anna is in charge of the park. That's what I used to do. James, he's in charge of the office. Another thing that I used to do, yeah. Lots of things are changing around here. Lots of things. People are doing lots of things that I used to do. Mr. Pilgrim says lots of things are too complicated for me. Does he trust me? Probably not. He also says lots of things that I do are very annoying. Well, lots of things have changed, but lots of things have stayed the same as well. Bien, vamos con la segunda parte de la frase de hoy, que es have happened, es decir, han ocurrido o han pasado. Bien, en este caso, things have happened, y es la tercera persona del plural en el present perfect simple, have happened. Cuidado que no decimos have passed, Uf, no, suena un poco raro en inglés. Decimos have happened o have occurred. Ahora, cuidado con la pronunciación de happened. Happened, porque al ser regular y terminar en N, tiene una D bien fuerte. No es happened, sino happened. Happened. Repite conmigo, happened. Muy bien. Y jamás happened, tampoco. Uf, fatal. Vamos con algunos ejemplos. I can't believe what's happened. Can you? So far today, only good things have happened. I can't tell you what has happened. Y por último, too many things have happened. Too many to count. Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente parte. Mm, I think this is going to be a masterpiece. You know, a real masterpiece requires inspiration. I get my inspiration from things that have happened. Things that have happened to me, things that have happened to friends of mine, things that have happened in history. That's right, we say things that have happened. Have happened. Things that have happened. Eso es. Now, so many things have happened. Good things have happened and bad things have happened. But you can get inspiration from both good things that have happened and bad things that have happened. 
I usually get my inspiration from vacations and spending time with destiny, you know, good things, things that have happened, things that have happened recently, and also things that have happened way in the past. Hmm. Now, I'm just gonna finish this up. But where's my, where's my paintbrush? What's happened to my paintbrush? Where did it go? What's happened to it? Uh. <laughs> Bien, vamos con la tercera y última parte de la frase de hoy, que es Since I last wrote to you. En español, desde que te escribí por última vez. Bien, aquí tenemos since, otra vez, que ni se pronuncia sainz, ni sainz, ni synth, sino since, since. Repite conmigo, since. Muy bien. Y el past simple. Aquí también tenemos last. Since I last wrote to you. También podríamos decir since I wrote to you last time, pero decir last es mucho más corto y por lo tanto lo preferimos. Since I last wrote to you. Desde que te escribí por última vez. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Have you made any progress since I last spoke to you? Otra más. Has she been here since I last saw her? ¿Ha estado ella aquí desde que la vi por última vez? Y otro más. Things have changed since you last were here. Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Hi, it's Frank, the security guard. And, well, a lot has changed since I last saw you. Yeah. A lot has changed since we last spoke. Yeah. A lot has changed since I last spoke to you. Yeah, a lot. You want the good news or the bad news? The good news. We've caught the tiger. Since the last time I spoke to you, we caught the tiger. So, that's the good news. The tiger has been caught. So everybody's okay. The bad news. This is tough. My partner, McNulty, has quit. Yeah. He said he's finished. He's not working here anymore. So that's two partners gone since we last spoke. Since I last. Yeah, desde que la última vez que. Desde la última vez que. Since we last spoke. Since I last saw you. Since I last. Y cuidado, no es signs. Que he oído mucha gente decir signs en vez de since. But a lot has happened since we last spoke. Oh man, this can't get any worse, can it? Hello again. All right, back together. Listen, you have to stick up for yourself, huh? Tienes que defender lo propio, lo tuyo propio, eh? Defiéndete. You have to stick up. Stick, stick, stick. Stick up, como stick ups. You have to stick up for yourself. Nobody else, nadie más, va a defender tus fueros y tus derechos, eh? Tienes que hacer defenderte tú mismo. You have to stick up for yourself. You have to stick up for, to stick up for. Myself, to stick up for himself. You have to stick up for yourself. Nobody else, nobody else, nobody else. Nadie más, no, nobody else is going to stand up for. Ponerse de pie para ti. O sea, defender tus derechos y tus fueros, defender lo tuyo. Nadie más va a hacerlo por ti. Eh? Nobody is going to stand up for you. Nobody else is going to stand up for you. You have to stick up for yourself. Hello again. Welcome back. A new sentence. A new sentence. Interesting sentence. <laughs> I like it. Listen, you'll have to stick up for yourself. Nobody else is going to stand up for you. You'll have to stick up for yourself. Nobody else is going to stand up for you. Okay, to stick up for and to stand up for basically mean the same thing. Defender tus propios derechos. Defender lo propio. Lo tuyo propio, eh? O sea, no, no dejes que la gente... Nadie va, va a apoyarte en esto. Tendrás que apoyarte a ti, a ti mismo con esfuerzo, ganas y tesón. 
to stick up for yourself. Defiéndete. Stick up for yourself. Stick como pinchar. Stick. Stick también es como pegar. Sticky. Pegajoso. Stick. Stick significa pinchar como un, con un tenedor. Pam. To stick. O con un cuchillo. Y stick como pegar algo. Stick. Pero to stick up for is a phrase over means defender lo propio. ¿Eh? Sí, sí. Defender tu, tu persona, tus derechos y todo. Stick up for yourself. Stick up for yourself. Yes. Why? Because nobody else is going to stand up for you. I've had it up to here. The staff is complaining again. But I'm just doing what I have to do. I'm sticking up for myself. I mean, you have to stick up for yourself, don't you? I mean, you agree with me, don't you? You have to stick up for yourself. That's what we say, to stick up for someone or to stick up for yourself. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just sticking up for myself. I always stick up for myself and I always stick up for my business. But some of the staff members don't like it. George is now complaining that he has to work after his operation. He says he's just sticking up for himself, but ha, huh, I mean, I'm sticking up for the business. He needs to come here and he needs to work after his operation. And of course, Mike, Margaret, and Felicity have decided to get involved. They say that they're just sticking up for their workmate, but that's not true. They're getting involved and they don't need to get involved. I'm here, I'm sticking up for myself, I'm sticking up for this business because I want this business to come out ahead. This is ridiculous. George is working after his operation whether he likes it or not. Okay, part two of our sentence. Are you ready? You'll have tendrás que defender lo propio, o tuyo propio. You'll have to uh, stick up for yourself. Stick up. Stick up for yourself. You'll have to stick up for yourself. Uh, why? Well, nobody else is going to stand up for you. So, nada más, nadie más te va a apoyar. Así. Defender tus derechos. O sea, te toca a ti, eh? Te compete a ti mismo. So, nobody else is going to stick up for you. Nobody else, nobody else, nobody else, nobody else, nobody else is el negativo. El interrogativo es is anybody else going to stick up for you or to stand up for you? Or, yes, somebody else. Por lo menos, alguien, alguien, seguro que sea, somebody else. Somebody else, anybody else, nobody else. Nobody else is going to stand up for you. And the word of the day is stool. Taburete. Como la palabra herramienta tool, con ese delante, tenemos stool. Stool is taburete. De bar, taburete. De casa, tab un taburete. Stool. Yes. Little Miss Carpool sat on her bar stool having a drink. Stool. A man likes to reflect. Yeah. You know, I've been working in this industry for many, many years. The service industry. Hotels, restaurants for many, many years. And you meet many, many different kinds of people. And, well, one thing I've learned, una cosa que, que aprendido, one thing I've learned is that you have to stick up for yourself. You have to stand up for yourself. Son sinónimos. You have to stick up for yourself, to stand up for yourself, because no one else will. See, nadie más lo hará. No one else will stand up for you. So you have to stand up for yourself. It's true, the customers, your bosses, your colleagues, no one will stand up for you. No one, no one else. To stand up for, defenderte a ti mismo. To stick up for yourself, to stand up for yourself. Si, si lo decimos, tenemos que ponerlo reflexivo. I stand up for myself, right? I always stand up for myself because no one else will. No one else, nadie más. No decimos nobody more. No, no one else or nobody else will stand up for you. So, stand up for yourself, because if not, no one else will. All right, welcome back. And let's finish our sentence, part three. Okay, from the beginning, nobody, nobody, well, no, no, you'll have, se me iba la frase, you'll have to stick up. For yourself. Yeah, defender lo propio. Tú mismo. Lo siento, sin ayuda a nadie. You'll have to stick up for yourself. Nobody else. Nadie más. Nobody else is going to stand up 
for you. To stand up is bueno ser de pie. Ahora bien, just to stand up for somebody is, bueno, literalmente, bueno, figu de forma figurada, ponerse de pie en defensa de alguien o tú mismo. To stand up for yourself is como to stick up for. Es prácticamente lo mismo los dos. La parte 1 y parte 3 de la frase esta. Yeah, nobody else is going to stand up for you. Stand up for your rights. Yeah, stand up for everything that is important to you. Stand up for your school. Stand up for your nation. Yes. Stand up for. O sea, realmente ponerse de pie en defensa de. O sea, se entiende la, la lógica de esta expresión. Stand up for. Nobody else is going to stand up for you. So, you're on your own. Hi everyone, Felicity here. Today's activity is self-defense. Mm -hmm. And why do we need self-defense, Felicity? Well, I'll tell you. Because you have to be able to stand up for yourself. Uh -huh. You have to be able to stand up for yourself. No one else will stand up for you. You have to be able to stand up for yourself. <laughs> Repeat with me. You have to stand up for yourself. Perfect. We can say you have to stand up for yourself or you have to stand up for someone else. But remember, you have to stand up for yourself. Wah! You weren't expecting that, were you? No. Well, the first lesson of self-defense is that you have to expect everything because you have to be able to stand up for yourself. Wah! What if somebody did that on your way to work? Oh, you have to be able to stand up for yourself. Repeat with me, Felicity. I am doing self-defense because I have to be able to stand up for myself. Wah! See? You, were you expecting that? <laughs> no. You have to be able to stand up for yourself. Remember, always stand up for yourself. People think I don't stand up for myself, but I do. Just watch. Wah! <laughs> oh, that was fun, fun, fun. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día.